This is a video about the similarities and differences between the credit crisis of 2008 and 2009 and the Great Depression. A lot of people in the news bring up these two events as being fundamentally, structurally very similar, and that is a correct statement. But there are also some key differences between the Great Depression and the credit crisis, and those differences are going to be the focus of this video. That being said, let's start with some of the similarities. Well. In the Great Depression, everything started with bank collapses, and that's actually very similar to the credit crisis, where we had Bear Stearns collapse, Lehman Brothers collapse, and a whole host of other smaller banks go under in a very short period of time. As a result, credit seized up, and this led to a deflationary spiral. People spent less, the stock market contracted, real estate contracted, and ultimately this led to rising unemployment. During the Great Depression, it peaked at 25%. In the current credit crisis, it's gone up to about 10% as I give this presentation in July of 2009, and um, many people expect it to go up even more. So these are certainly very dangerous similarities. Um, this deflationary spiral uh, is, is high risk to the economy. But that being said, I think there are three key differences between the Great Depression and the credit crisis, and those differences are going to be the focus of our discussion today. So let's start with government intervention. In the Great Depression, the government actually raised interest rates. Uh, and when a government raises interest rates, they make things more expensive. So consumers struggled even more. They also let all the banks fail. They said, we're, we're not going to bail you out. And um, this, this had very immediate destructive ramifications. I'm not saying that bank bailouts are a good thing, but um, letting the banks fail certainly, certainly caused some harm as well. And finally, the, the government also waited years for any sort of stimulus. It, FDR was the first one to really uh, push for any sort of stimulus in his New Deal program, and that was several years after the Great Depression had already come under underway. Um, today, on the other hand, things are very different. The government is, is far more activist. The Federal Reserve is injecting cash into the economy at a very rapid rate. They've slashed, they've slashed interest rates as much as possible. They keep pumping money into the economy by buying up treasuries. And this makes things cheaper for consumers. They've also, as I mentioned, they lowered interest rates. And um, from the government's standpoint, they've sponsored a whole bunch of takeovers and bailouts of all these banks. Again, it, I'm not saying it's necessarily a good thing. There, there's certainly things that could have been handled better. But I think that it is very different from the Great Depression in, in a number of ways. And, and finally, um, President Obama has passed a huge stimulus package, $700 billion. And... Um, we, we have yet to see exactly what kind of impact that's going to have, but that never happened early on in the Great Depression. The second major thing is an increase in public sector employment. During the Great Depression, the government employed less than 10% of the workforce. Today, on the other hand, the government spends more than 33%, one-third of the gross domestic product. So what this means is that even if all private industry goes down the tubes, there will still be some government spending to keep up a trickle of, of, of growth and uh, sustaining the economy. Um, in the Great Depression, this government spending wasn't really as much of an option. Finally, today we have global access to capital. And what I mean by this is that there is, during the Great Depression, there was no electronic transfer of money. And as a result, lending was very difficult. It kind of had to be done by hand, largely, with you know, ledgers and, and personalized accounts and everything. And the, the direct result of this was that each country had to fight recession by itself. Um, it's not like I could say, I'm going to go to Chinese investors and borrow money to fi finance U.S. growth. That, that wasn't really something that could happen back then. On the other hand, today, um, global access to capital makes borrowing and lending very easy. If I want to get a loan, I can, I can do it pretty easily as long as I'm credit worthy and I can find people who think that I'm credit worthy, right? So... Technology has certainly helped improve, and that means that as other economies start recovering, they'll lend their excess capital to the United States, and the United States can recover at a faster rate. Um, so I think that all of these things, government intervention, increase in public sector employment, and the global access to capital are crucial differences between the, the, the Great Depression and the credit crisis. I think there are some structural fundamental similarities. I mentioned those earlier, but I remain optimistic because of these differences. Thank you very much for watching and for similar videos um, on, on, on these types of financial issues, I recommend you check out my website, www.canjo.com.